To help you achieve the best results from the lessons on Frank's YouTube channel, Frank has developed a range of quality products, including the watercolor brush set, which has the one and a half and three quarter inch goat ears and the number three rigger. Frank has also developed his own range of artist quality watercolor paints. These paints come in 12 mil tubes and are the eight colors Frank uses himself in his video tutorials. These products and many more can be viewed in detail at Frank's art store at simplypainting.com. If you prefer to order by phone, please use the following. Is this not a gorgeous gorge? Well, you stay with me and I'll tell you where we are. Simply Painting is underwritten by Windsor & Newton, manufacturers of fine art materials since 1832. Welcome everyone once again to Simply Painting. I'm Frank Clark and I'm talking to you from a bridge that crosses the Rio Grande, that legendary river. I'm off now to visit the home of a very famous painter with a very Irish name. This area here is called Ghost Ranch, and it is also the area where Georgia O'Keeffe, the famous American artist, painted. Now she lived to be 99 years of age, and she painted these beautiful mountains around here with all their ever-changing color. And the name O'Keeffe, well, of course, her grandfather was Irish. Well, we're gonna head off now, go around the ranch, find something for you and I to paint, and there's plenty, I'm sure. So let's head out. Having seen some of the wonderful scenery in this area, I can now understand why Georgia spent most of her painting life here. Hello there. Well, well. Georgia O'Keeffe country. Oh, my goodness. Ah, wasn't it lovely? And the Rio Grande. That's the river. Yes, that's the famous American river, isn't it? The height of that bridge, I didn't like it at all, I might tell you. Anyway, before we get blathering, as we say in Ireland, let's tell you about the materials we're going to need to paint this little picture. First of all, only four watercolours. Light red, ultramarine blue, lemon yellow and raw sienna. We need our three brushes, which of course are the large goat hair brush, one and a half inch, the baby goat hair brush, which is half the size, and the rigger. We need the tray to put the paints out on, or a palette of course we call it. We need a cloth to control the water on the brush, some water, and last but by no means least, we need a sheet of watercolour paper measuring 14 by 10, and it's longwise, therefore it is landscape. And without further ado, let's have some more fun. Horizon, sky, middle and foreground. So the first thing we do is draw in this sky. The sky, the horizon. Why do I say that? Oh dear, Georgia, she's a wonderful old lady, I'll tell you that, yeah. And of course she became probably, if not the best known, certainly one of the best known artists in all of America. Wonderful, wonderful artist. Now. We've drawn that. Next thing, we've got to keep the pencil in our hand just a little longer. Because this time, remember all those rocky areas like, the, oh, they were gorgeous, the way those rocks stuck up in the sky. That's what we're going to paint. So I'm going to draw in very quickly some rocks, OK? Right across like that. Now we're going up into the sky, he says. We're making an imposing kind of a thing. Up up there now. That's up. It's kind of like a two-tiered thing. And then this huge, gigantic rock came up like that. It stuck out of the ground, and it 
Don't make them too symmetrical. Now there's one there, and then outside it here there's another one, right? And that came down, bulged out like that, and down like that. And then the other side, it came down, right down like that. Now I'm, see that? Looks like kind of two fingers, a <laughs> little bit, yes. There we go, that's all we gotta do. Now we gotta just put some masking fluid on that, just to protect it. Remember the masking fluid, latex, rubbery stuff? Take the top off very carefully, get your old brush. Now, the reason I say old brush is that, of course, this substance, being latex rubber, can stick to your brush. And if it does, you'll have a dreadful job getting it off. In fact, it can ruin a brush if you're not careful. So what I do is I'm counting now as we're talking up to 20. And when I get to 20, you'll see what I'm going to do. That's 20, I'm going to wash it off. Doesn't matter that the water turns a little bit creamy coloured, still perfectly okay to paint the rest of the picture with. You don't need to change the water halfway through pictures. In fact, I prefer to leave it. A bit of dirty water sort of adds a bit of texture to the picture. Now it doesn't show. Now you see what I'm doing coming right down there, and then the same thing across here, and I'll tell you why, because I want to protect it from the sky, don't I? Because I've got a good sky to put in this time. Wait till you see it. Blue sky, yes. Very blue. You know, the thing about Georgia was that, uh, unlike a lot of people, like yourself maybe, she wanted to paint from the day she was born. By the time she was eight years of age, she'd made her mind up she was going to be an artist, whether, whether they liked it or not. And in fact, uh, it's not, uh, not unusually, she started off, she went to college, she started to paint, she was painting in oils. And she became very disillusioned with what she was doing. She wasn't happy with it at all, and she quit. She gave the reason that uh, she didn't like the smell of turpentine. You know, you get it with oil, it's awful. But that wasn't the reason. She just was unhappy with what she was doing. And then she turned to watercolours. And all was well. I'm going to dry this. Now, I've had to give that a really, really, really good dry. And you make sure you do the same. It must be absolutely dry because if that's not dry and you proceed on to paint, your brush will stick to it. I'll tell you that now. This was something in Georgia's time. There was no masking fluid, I'm sure. I don't know how what she used, but uh, it would have been wonderful because she painted flowers a lot. I'm sure you've seen her work. If you haven't, go and look at it. It's well worth it. It's wonderful. Now, this is ultramarine blue. I am not wetting the paper. I'm just getting some ultramarine blue on the brush. Good and strong and heavy, because this was a really blue sky, and that's what I want to depict. I, really, I start from the top, and of course, the, both the pigment and the water run down the page, so it makes it very... Now, when I come to my mountain, you see, I keep going. Do you see what I'm doing? Now, sometimes you'll get little bubbly effects on the paper. That's usually because you've stuck your finger on it. I actually once complained to the manufacturers and they said, there's marks all over my watercolour paper, it's a faulty. And they said, keep your hands off it and you'll be all right, Frank. <laughs> Walked into that one, didn't I? Yeah, yes. Well, sure, you've got to keep these people on their toes. Now, it will dry a lot flatter and you'll see in a minute. I'm going to give it one more swipe up the top here. I want it really blue. See, you go right across. Like, Look, exactly like you were painting this garage door. Then brush in there and give it a really good dry. Now I'm going to get this old hair dryer here and maybe while you, you listen to some music or something like that, have a look at the scenery. I'll be back to you in a minute. There we go. Well, 
Well, isn't that lovely rocks and things there? Yes, some nice music. Hope you enjoyed that. A little interlude while I was drying. Now, you'll notice I haven't done anything since you left. It is exactly as it was, except that it's dry. And as it dried, of course, it flattened it. It cleaned out nicely. All those little spots and things disappeared. Now, next, let's have a look at our mountain. Let's see. So what we need to do is we need to give it a little rub with our finger. You see that? Peel it off, he says. Yes. That's why you must be sure it's very dry, because if you didn't, and you did this and it was wet, well, you know what you'd get. You'd get streaks all over it, wouldn't you? Now, always brush towards the center, away from the sky, with your finger. Do you know why? Because if you went that way, it might tear the paper, and then you get a big tear going right up your paper, and your lovely mountain scene would be ruined, your rocks. I was warned not to call them mountains. They are rocks. Big rocks, I do admit, but... Yeah. Off you come. Look at that. We've cleared the whole thing off. Isn't that handy now? Now we're left with a perfect outline. Wasn't that easy? Our next move now is, let's get back into the water, put out some, some of this raw sienna. Oh, look at that. Isn't that nice? Now let's mix up some of this. We're going to go into these. Now it's a very faint colour because you've got to start lighting, then get dark. Now what I'm going to do is put a tiny bit of light red out. And you'll see why. I might want to get it a little bit ready. So only the teensiest bit. Don't make this too strong. If you do, you'll spoil your picture. Now watch. I'm going to start. Oh, that's a little bit too. We're going to see the colour, don't we? At least let's see it. Ah, that's better. Okay. Now down the far side of the rocks. Look, the, I'm going to assume on this occasion that the light is coming this way. So I'm going to fill the whole thing in. But I'm going to see where I've left a bit white there. That'll be nice eventually now. Look. See, you can almost see it taking shape at the moment, can't you? Hope you're having a good look at this now. Right down like that. Right down, just below the horizon line. See that? Now, what we've got to do is give that a little dry. Just a little dry. There you go. Now let's uh, get our other brush, our number six brush here. Now we've got to make up some kind of darker colour now. I'm going to take some of the blue and some of the red. That gives me a kind of a, a whiny colour. And then on the back here, do you see I'm going to come down here. Now always work light to dark. Don't go mad black first. And there was a kind of a dark area there. Now I'm working from a little sketch I have. It was actually, I'm working from a little photograph, I tell a lie, it's not a sketch at all. Now, when you go out, of course, you're going to do the same, aren't you? You're going to take little photographs, you're going to make sketches. Now, they don't have to be you know, all beautiful things. A sketch is exactly what it says. It's a sketch. It is not something that you're going to hang up on the wall as a piece of art. It's purely a reference for you and you alone. Do you understand that? So there, in fact, the word sketch, I think I mentioned it before one time, is, in fact, sketchy. I've heard the word, oh, it's very sketchy. That means... Exactly that. Hmm. Now, coming down, there's another... The inside of this rock here was kind of... There was a gap between the two of them. See that? Looking good, isn't it? See, you work your way. And, and also, don't be too quick at putting on the real dark colours. Just give it a chance. You can also... See, I can make that darker now by taking more of the blue. See? Some of the blue like that. Till I get a really dark colour. Watch then. Now then I can, I can start to fill in, you see that, that was a really dark area there, because it was coming around behind the rock kind of thing. And that area there was dark, and then this. I love doing these rocks, they're great fun because you can, and if, you're, if you move the shadow a bit, once you keep it the right direction, you're fine. Do you know what I mean by that? Once you don't have dark over this side. Now I'm going to go really dark down there because that was, as was that. See the idea now? Easy, isn't it? When we get down a bit more now, we'll, we'll head off down into the deserty part here. I think we've done enough of that just for the moment now. Let's not go mad with it, as they say. Just a little bit there, maybe. Uh, that's another little bit there. These are all bits of the rock that... Now, OK. Next. We're going to get a big piece. We're going to come on down here now. We've got to, we've got to put in some real colour into this thing now, haven't we? 
Big brush, same mixture, because it's the very same. You've had a bit of white here and there, don't be too worried. But if you miss a little bit, you know, you don't have to cover it at all. In fact, it's often nicer if you don't, see that? It's beginning to make a bit of sense now, isn't it? Now, there were some bushes, and they were just about here somewhere. So the next move we're going to have will be to do that. First of all, let's carry on down the hallway. We got that. And you see, we kind of bring the brush strokes down that way a bit, and then it makes it look like it's going uphill. Clever, hmm? Yes. Let's put out some lemon yellow. You know what you get when you get lemon yellow? You get lemon yellow, and blue will give you green. But before we do that, we're going to give it a tiny little dry. That was a quickie. Actually, here's one for you, probably. I don't know if you know this or not, but do you know why the Automobile Association was formed? Hmm? Well, we would all say, of course, to protect motor cars and to go along and help us if we break down. That sort of thing. Is that what you're thinking? No, you wouldn't be right. The Automobile Association was actually founded so they could send out scouts and watch out for police roadblocks and, and warn the members. <laughs> in case they got caught by the police. <laughs> How about that? I thought that was great. <laughs> Maybe they should st go back to doing that. Imagine we could have AA guys at every corner saying, hey, there's a policeman around the corner, take it easy. But that's why it was done. Believe me, that's the truth. Now, this is some bushes here. Just, I'm going to put a few scrapes and things. They're just on the side of the hill, a little, a little few scrapes up in them. Like that. They're not big bushes, they're little ones. And I said, OK, and a little bit few more here. And, See, it's on the side of a hill kind of thing. I'm going to bring it down a little bit more like that now. That's one side. Now we got over to the other side here. We've got a big bush to do here. So there now. So the AA, they were serving a super... I mean, that was about 1904 or 5 or something, like very early days. Did you know as well that uh, first motor cars in Europe, it was obligatory that a man would walk in front of the car with a red flag to warn people there was a motor car coming? How about that? You didn't know that now, I bet you. I didn't, I didn't know about the AA guys either now, admittedly. I thought that was something. Look out, there's, there's police. Mm. Now, these were just bushes. Nice ones. They weren't... They weren't uh, four bushes. They were just ordinary kind of bushes you'd find. Desert bushes, yeah. Now, I'm making up some of the blue and the light red, and I get a kind of a brown colour. See, that's so I can put in some darker. Now, this is all done with the corner of the large brush very quickly, see? Because this part is in shadow, very obviously, because... And then we can run a few. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It's the bushes. <laughs> now we're going to come on down here. See the way it's beginning to take shape now, isn't it? I think we need to get back in the middle here again. So now let's... Go back in here and just get some more, just a kind of a darkish colour. I want to just here and there hit it. Well, that's maybe a bit too much. Now, you see, I did something there that's very bold. It's OK, I didn't do any damage, but what should I have done? I should have gone to my little piece of paper over here to the left, put my brush on it, and tested it like that. And then I wouldn't have put that piece that I felt was a bit dark. But all's well. See, I've now got a, I'm creating kind of little... This is just, with the brush, this is the baby goat hair, the very dry with some brown, which is the light brown, which is the raw sienna, and a tiny bit of that same light red in there. The same stuff as we used, only slightly darker, you see it? Actually, if you use the same colour again as you used underneath, it will, it will come out a little darker, because when you put paint on paint, that's what happens. Understand that? Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm going to give this a good dry now in a minute. Let it all settle in and lovely and grand. And maybe when I'm doing that, uh, you might look at something quite unusual that Georgia did. So you go ahead and I'll give this a little bit of a dry. I'm in front of the Church of San Francisco de Assis here in New Mexico. Now this is the most photographed and painted church in America. Why? Well, it's beautiful, of course, but one of the main reasons is that Georgia O'Keeffe painted it. 
But this is where the story gets a bit peculiar. Let me show you what she painted. Well, believe it or not, this is the side that Georgia painted. There we go, nice and dry now. That was a, what do you think of that? Most unusual, wasn't it? <laughs> Only she would think of doing that, wouldn't it? But that's what makes genius. You know, we'd all look at that and we'd say, oh, you know, we're going to paint, yeah, that side, have to do that. She looks at it and says, no, 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 it'd be better from the fireside. It's more artistic. So you don't pay, you actually do not pay an artist for what he actually does. It's his thought process is what you're actually paying for. Because they can think of things and see them differently than we would. Until we're artists like you and I. Then we, then we see them different, don't we? They do. People say, oh, that's not, why did she, that's why. Anyway. anyway, that's probably one of the most famous paintings in America. That back of that church, the back end of the church, he says, yeah, now, now look, and I'm coming on down. Just a few more little bits and pieces there. I want to just give the impression that the land is falling away from those rocks. And yet there's some nice light. See it that now? There's a little bit here. I'm saving this, these bits here. We've got to highlight those in a minute. But see the idea? Now, it's getting the impression that the land is kind of falling that way. These rocks are standing off up in the air there, aren't they? I don't. Another bit. There's another little bit of darkness there. That's that rock is split, kind of. I'm not going to do much more with this now. We don't want to be over. You can overwork it, can't you? Yes, you can. We've got to get down the front of this. Down to the foreground, yeah. All right, foreground. Now we're going to change again. Now the foreground here, I'm going to make that kind of a little bit grassy, a little bit. So we take a, some of the lemon yellow and some of the blue, make it a light green color. I don't want to make it too strong. See, just like that. Now I'm using the brush, the tip of the brush, to bring downward strokes. This is where you see the old goat hair. <laughs> you see, you wouldn't do that with an ordinary brush. Because the brush is so dry, I can give the impression of actually, should do something in there, that's a bit, of actually little wisps of grass. See them? And then I can darken them if I need by just adding in a little more of my, see? There we go, because of course, naturally behind that, you know, the, you probably noticed that the shadows were very long on some of the, you know, when you saw long shadows. Do you know why that is? That's because we did that piece in the evening time, in the evening time, and therefore the shadows were longer. Then we did it purposely. Oh, yes, our, our boss, you know, he made us stay up all day, didn't get our dinner till 9 o'clock at night because we were waiting for the correct light. You see, this is where these directors, you know, oh, yes, uh, Right, they're hard men, hard taskmasters. They, they, don't, uh, they don't suffer fools easily, they say. They'll have you working day and night. Now we're still going on down. Look, see, it's getting to make a bit of... Now, I'd like to put in some lighter kind of colour here. Now, let me just see what I mean by that. I'm going to clean my brush first. Might be a good idea. It's even a bit dark, isn't it? I want to get it as better, nice and light. Look at that. It's almost dry. What I've done is I've just dried off, cleaned the brush first, dried it off pretty well. So there's nearly no paint on it at all. It's only the, as I say, the dirty water's painting this. I did mention that earlier, didn't I? Just to break it up. See, they give you the impression of kind of the desert and there's all these kind of nice, nice bits and pieces in it. Now, I've got to, oh yes. Got to get some. Hey, my brush has got hard. That's the thing, by the way, if it happens that your masking fluid brush gets covered in the stuff and does actually become solid, <laughs> as it will. I'm just putting in a few little, little branches sticking out here. Now, if that does happen, the manufacturers will tell you, uh, you can't do anything. That's it, throw it away. Well, I'll tell you something else. Yes, you can. What you do is you get, you know white spirits? You can use petrol, but it's very damaging on your brush. 
White spirits is what I like to use, and what I do is clear my brush in it, and the chances are you'll get it back. Now, I do not advise it that every time you use the masking fluid, you should clean your brush with white spirits, but if it happens that you had a problem, that's what I do. I put a bit of light in that there, isn't that nice? A couple more things to do now, we're getting along nicely, aren't we? First of all, we've got my pal, Joe the Bird. <laughs> You know, that guy is becoming famous, isn't he? Joe the Bird. Oh, he's a nice man. All right, let me just put in my bird here, which of course is a flat letter V. That's all it is. And now let's get down the bottom here, get my pen out and sign this thing. And I think you'll find because we use that lovely blue sky, we've got quite a nice contrast on it. So we get next our little mat, our piece of cardboard or board or whatever it is. We put it down on the thing like that, to have a look at our picture. Always do this, you can check your picture. I'm quite pleased with that. Now, I've got to say to you that that's all for now, but if you'd like more information on this program or any of my other programs, why not visit my website, simplypainting.com. Bye-bye. To help you achieve the best results from the lessons on Frank's YouTube channel, Frank has developed a range of quality products including the watercolour brush set which has the one and a half and three quarter inch goat ears and the number three rigger. Frank has also developed his own range of artist quality watercolour paints. These paints come in 12 mil tubes and are the eight colours Frank uses himself in his video tutorials. These products and many more can be viewed in detail at Frank's art store at simplypainting.com. If you prefer to order by phone, please use the phone.